Okay, folks, I had to uh, do a bit of uh, altering, so hope everybody can find this. Hi there, folks. I hope you can hear me all right. Sorry for the glitch I had. Let me know if you can hear me. Hoping uh, the microphone is working good. John C. says yes. <clears throat> Elan Davis says yep. Good stuff. Great so glad to see everyone here. So I'm going to wait a little while until folks gather, and then I'll uh, get into the uh, the topic today. Um, and um, for now, folks, I just wanted to say thank you very, very much for joining me here. And again, my apologies. Um, I keep trying to get better at doing lives. And uh, for whatever reason, <laughs> I keep struggling with starting them up. But uh, Anyway, that's a good thing that uh, we're up and rolling. Very, very cool. So let's just see who's uh, who's here. Uh, let's see. We've got uh, Lee's living out of the norm. That's an interesting. Uh, that's an interesting title. Uh, so th thanks for being here. Uh, Alan Davis is here. I think I'm pronouncing it right. And um, M Trads is here. Uh, Aislinn Fox, Tim Erickson, John C., uh, Michael uh, Tuchonik. Sorry, Michael, if I botched that. Biker Boy is here from Ontario. Wow, cool. Terry Thompson's here. Contrary Mary is here. And uh, we got Robert uh, Shinest. Believe, Live, Love, and Laugh. From Puerto Rico. Wow, how cool is that? Kyle R is here. And uh, good to see you too, Kyle. And let's see, we still got more people coming in. Looks like 37 people so far. And Red Hot Fiat, who's familiar to me for sure. Uh, well, I can call Al. That's great. Good stuff, Al. So I hope everyone is doing good today. And I just want to say thank you very, very much for uh, coming by and uh, joining me live. And for me, it's a great time for me to be able to just uh, connect with people that I know uh, fairly well, as in they're <clears throat> familiar with them commenting and some of the things they ask me, I remember. So that's really cool. And uh, <clears throat> believe, live, love, and laugh. Says always nice to watch your videos, and I just want to say thank you very much for for watching them. And uh, oh wow, well we got the three hundred pound leprechaun, and uh, wow, I'll tell you that that has to you know there's for amusement factor alone three hundred pound leprechaun's uh, title or handle uh, or name is uh, way up there in the comedic value I think. PMLM is here live. That's very cool. Michael is here. And uh, Michael, I think, if I remember right, has lots of comments about, hey, Don, why don't you make more videos? <laughs> that type of thing. And uh, Joseph Haviza is here. And uh, lots of uh, folks. Uh, and uh, Robert uh, Scheinost says, my German is good. And uh, speak as a Deutsch. I actually know my I, I know almost no German, Robert, but thank you. 
There's Michael with uh, Make More Videos. <laughs> I'm surprised he uh, uh, was held off that long. Well, actually, he didn't. Wandering Gnome, Alaska. Wow, that's cool. And uh, <clears throat> so really cool. And then Tim Erickson says he's a month away from making the move to desert living. How cool is that? Well, the plan of action today, folks, I'm going to give it another five minutes or so, and then I'm going to kind of launch into just um, the topic, and then I'll discuss that for a while. And then um, then you folks can then uh, ask me any questions at all uh, based on the topic or any other questions you have that, you know, been kind of in the back of your mind for a long time, that kind of thing. Yes, and Red Hot Fiat says hit the like button. That's very, very cool. And before we get into the topic, I want to address a couple uh, things uh, that have come up recently that are kind of new learning curves for me. And as you can imagine, um, uh, not making excuses, but I'm just not as good with things like live chat and 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 working through some of the nuance uh, the nuances of YouTube and. Uh, and and so uh, so anyway, uh, that's all part of it. Well, Michael's very observant. He sees uh, he sees the axe and he says, "What do you need that axe for? Do you seriously take intruders that serious?" Well, uh, Michael, it's there for a variety of reasons. Um, you know, Canadians always have axes, and I've used them a lot. That's all I can tell you. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, so I'm going to go back to uh, just some of the things that I'm, I've been trying to figure out. Um, more of my subscribers now uh, are saying, you know, Don, um, we really want to cheer you on and, and make sure you do okay with YouTube. Why don't you open up a, a Patreon uh, membership? And so... I don't really know much about it, to be honest. And maybe you folks can educate me, those of you who may be uh, support other channels with Patreon. What I've read so far is, is it, it's just kind of like a monthly thing where you send the person a, a dollar a month or whatever you want to do. <clears throat> and then uh, and then they, you know, on that, of course, it, it would be in my case, I would cash that in. Now, some of the negatives I've heard about Patreon is that they charge Patreon, um, and I think it might go back to Google, but they tend to get a large amount of that. So I'm really not so sure Patreon is a great idea unless folks can, can convince me otherwise. Um, one thing I've noticed, which has been really fun, and a few people have used it, is when you make a comment just on any video, you can attach a monetary thing. Like, you know, like say, uh, okay, we think Don needs uh, uh, some more, I don't know, hot chocolate. No, orange juice. And so we'll throw $5 in with the comment. So you can do that. So that's instead of Patreon. And I think I get more of that. And then finally, and I won't stay on this topic because it's kind of embarrassing, you know, to be honest, but there are a couple other ways to PayPal, and there's always a link in my videos, and one really sweet person literally uh, sent $100 the other day to my PayPal account, so that was a surprise and really kind. And then, of course, in this chat, if you look down below, there's something... Uh, called a super chat. And so what you do is uh, you click on, there's a dollar bill there. So you click on that. And then what that does is allows you to do anything you want. Um, uh, so, so anyway, that's a good thing. And super chat works really good. What I like about super chat is it happens right during the chat. And then I can see who to thank right away and that kind of thing. So that's all I'll say about that. I don't, I thought I set it up properly. So I think it's working. Um, I hope it is. Um, Cause sometimes I honestly get a little, um, what should I say? Technologically challenged. Like with my Amazon wish list, I learned that I have to refresh that every 
couple of weeks. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So, uh, so anyway, you know, that's the story uh, on that type of thing. Michael uh, Tachonek says something valuable. He says, I don't use Patreon. They sell my info and I use PayPal. That makes sense, Michael. And um, I'll be really honest here. I don't support any other channels with with uh, uh, with Patreon either. What I do is, is I go on, like, for example, on Green Dream Project, when they have lives, uh, then I will go on there and click again at the bottom of the chat uh, where you see everyone, the dollar sign. I click on that. And then that becomes uh, that's and then that's what's called super chat. So um, that's really really cool. And then the the Amazon wish list is really wonderful. And I'm just it it's so crazy, folks. And I won't spend any more, much more time with this. But um, I'll go to my post office box, and I have no idea every day what's going to happen. I really don't. And um, so like the other day I went there and I um, unlocked the box and it makes me unlock a bigger box, um, which is nearby, like a storage box. And there was a, a big box of socks from Amazon. So anyway, uh, that was uh, that was a kind gift. So Amazon wish list definitely works great. So enough about that type of thing. Um, I'm going to get into the topic, folks. And so let's address some important things about this. So we're going to delve into tips for moving off grid because I get a lot of folks who say, hey, I want to move off grid as well. And even more specifically, some say, hey, I want to move to Cochise County like you've done. I get a lot of requests for property, uh, you know, do I know of properties in the area and all kinds of things. And so I just try to explain to people what I've done and, and that's all I can do really. And um, what with, with some authority. So having said so, let's have a look here uh, at some of these things. And, um, and then some of these topics I'm going to bring up uh, is uh, is the the whole business of uh, being practical and some of these things are going to be very obvious, but let's start with uh, some of those things. And um, one thing to be one thing to consider before you moved moved off grid. Oh, look at this, Cliff Andrews, boom! <laughs> Super chat works today. Five bucks. Thank you, Cliff. I really appreciate that. Really kind. So just like for any goal financially, before you move off grid, you want to not make a quick decision to do that. Research it. And I would say start saving if you can and save as many years as you can before moving off grid. But the problem is properties are going up so severely and quickly. I can see why some would want to move off grid pretty quick. But if possible, get rid of all credit card debt, auto loans or car loans, any kind of debt you have, if at all possible, because uh, you don't want to go into a scenario where you're trying to build your life here off grid and are being burdened and pulled down by uh, by uh, by debt. You, you definitely want to avoid that if possible. So, for example, um, I had, hmm, goodness, a little, a little bit of credit card debt, but I mean, we're talking a couple hundred dollars or so, enough that you would, that I'd pay off every month. So that's how I started also, I saved. Now, what's interesting and super fortunate for me, I only saved for about four years before moving off debt, or excuse me, off grid and being out of debt. And so essentially, um, uh, 
And and so essentially, uh, and and so essentially, uh, I I came in with about four years of savings, um, and my last ten years of work was retail, so I wasn't earning a lot, but I was very very frugal. So I brought in as much money as I could, and then of course, one option for you, if possible, is to find. Uh, someone who's selling property where they will float the loan for you at a reasonable interest rate. I mean, you know, obviously some landowners will try to be really greedy and, you know, and charge you a ridiculous interest rate. But it is possible to do that. And so if you're not bringing hardly any savings in, then that's something you can do. Patty Lily Richardson sent $9.99. Thank you very, very much, Patty. Awesome. That's very sweet. So what I did is, is I looked very, very hard at where I should live. And what's going to govern where you live is really um, what kind of home or building you want to have. Because... For example, I chose Cochise County here because it would allow me to do a shed to cabin conversion. And those are so inexpensive to start out with. Uh, For example, you can get uh, a 300 square foot cabin, beautifully built for around $10,000, all windows and doors, et cetera. Throw another couple grand in there and then it's all insulated. Okay, so for around... So for around um, 12, 12 grand these days, or even less, you if you have that kind of cash, there you go, your home, you're going to have your home right away, and you can finish it up as you go. So that's really important to consider what kind of home you're going to have. And so uh, once you know, for example, I couldn't have a tiny cabin or a shed to home conversion in other counties in Arizona. That's why I chose Cochise with the owner builder opt-out, meaning I could have an earth bag home, a straw bale home, a shed to cabin, whatever. So it's strategic that you, number one, decide what kind of house you're gonna have or home, and number two, choose the right county, and then start looking for your property. Zillow is your friend. You can put in just land and the price you're you that you want to pay and go from there so very very good start right away in that case um so uh so i didn't have a massive amount of money but uh the uh uh the essentially um my funds went into land purchase and i did that first of all i purchased land my land here closed december 31st 2019. And then the cabin I put on here was put on the 4th of July after I moved here. Um, The other thing is important to note, you cannot live in an RV in most counties, including Cochise County. It can be a temporary place where you can stay for, I think it's now up to two years while your building is being built. Now, mind you, they'll give you an extension on that if your building is being built. So um, so that's uh, important. So a lot of people think they can just park their RV and live in it forever or whatever. You cannot. And if your neighbors out you, the county can literally force you to uh, change up your situation. So... Uh, <clears throat> That's really important. The other thing, most counties will demand that you have some kind of septic system for your black, for your black water, as in toilet water, and sink water is also considered black water. So you have to uh, invest in a septic uh, system. And just this December, they got rid of the really simple, super cheap system where you just basically had your perk test done and then a little homemade bucket trench scenario for your kitchen grease 
and then you had uh, uh, outside compost uh, three bucket system that was uh, available and permissible under Cochise County, but they just got rid of that this month. So that means people have to go to a full septic system. Those are expensive. Mine was $5,000. Um, now they're a lot more expensive, but you, you'll want to shop around for that for sure. Um, so obviously you'll want to set up where you've got no mortgage. And for someone like me who lives on social security and YouTube earnings, then it can be done. And so that's super, super important uh, to um, get, set up wherever, set up where you can live affordably. And, and every way I've stacked it, because I don't have the strong enough back as a 60, almost 68 year old to do earth bags or straw bales, the shed to cabin stacks up being the most reasonable um, a reasonable scenario for me. And I think it's a, a wise choice for many others as well. Um, one of the things that folks who've has mentioned is, why don't I have a pickup truck? And I think there's kind of like some image if you're an off-grid old guy, you're driving a truck. And I'll tell you, you don't really need one for the most part much. So that's why I drive my Toyota Corolla. $40 fills it up. I can drive completely across the state into California on that $40. And the times I need a pickup, um, you can rent one for about 75 bucks a day. And if you plan that accordingly, get all your lumber and everything you need uh, from, uh, you know, on that run. And you're not going to be going to Home Depot every day of your life. Um, for me, a dozen times or so a year where I need something large, where I have to have a, a large, where I'm hauling something large, pardon me, where I've got to have a, a, a pickup. And fortunately, I do some work for a neighbor of mine, and he loans me his, which is really kind. Um, so that is is really important. Let's look at the topic of a well. Uh, think about a well and plan this again before you even move to your property, the size of your building, and consider rainwater harvesting. It, 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 there's nothing greater than it. it it's awesome. The last time I purchased water was, um, I don't know, last this past May, maybe, I think it was. And um, otherwise, if you're frugal with water, and I only have 200 square foot of roof space, and then now I've got catchment for my solar panels as well. So I wouldn't even look at dig digging a well. That's old, an old mindset that I don't I, I don't see applicable unless you're going to be doing a lot of uh, uh, fruit tree watering, vegetable gardens, and you're actually selling all your produce or something similar. So, so that's something that you can uh, scratch off a list that's super, uh, super expensive. Um, choose your land purchase wisely. So when you get a real estate agent, make sure he or she checks out and they have your interest at heart. And also there's something called CCNRs, covenants, uh, conditions, and restrictions. Make sure that there isn't in that neighborhood uh, rules that are uh, HOA rules that say you can't even have a tiny cabin there. Also, when you purchase land, make sure there are hardly any washes or water running through it because then you're not going to be able to find a place to park your, uh, your, your, your building. And you're going to have a lot of trouble legally being able to put a building there because of the waterways, etc. So even if your real estate agent wants to show you a piece of land really quickly, go, and that's what I did. I went time and time again. I went, nope, nope. I want to see the CCNRs. Want to see the CCNRs. And I used a great realtor, and she's still in business by the name of Cody Hoyer. And she's local in Sierra Vista. Look her up, Google her. She's amazing. She's no nonsense. She gives you exactly the knowledge you need and really quick. Um, beware of well shares. I mean, I can't think of anything worse than trying to share your water with four other strangers who constantly argue about who should pay for the pump that's now deceased. 
or something to that effect. I would never do a well share personally, but if, if it's your family and you, your relatives all bought around you and you get along with what, them well, then maybe, or close friends. Um, when you're working on projects, take as many breaks as you think you need. And that includes getting off your property, uh, going to a motel, chilling, showering, swimming for a couple days, and just resting. You can and will burn out if you're not careful. That's really, really uh, important to be aware of. And for someone like me, I have to be very mindful of that because I'm very, very focused. So my friends call me just plain stubborn. But um, when I'm on something, unless it's finished, I am not happy. Bugs me until it's done. But you got to do R&R. &R. Um, research. Research the county website about if, especially if you're going to do opt-out, and if there's even anything that isn't addressed as a question in your mind, email them. They usually email you back within 24 hours. Do not do, do guesswork when it comes to laying the foundation, pardon the pun, of your, your building and where you're going to put it. Um, in this area, you're going to want to uh, stay away from areas, uh, or I shouldn't say areas, objects that look like they could hide reptiles under them. So, for example, I will never pick up even a plank on the ground without taking my rake and flipping it over first and that kind of thing. I have, I don't know, I think five species of snakes on this property. It's all wildlife. I'm a wildlife guy, but I'm very, very cautious. And, for example, I know of one, two neighbors who... I don't know, we're just airing their house out and left the door open. And one had Mojave greens in his bedroom. The other had a big, this is like a month ago, big Mojave green rattlesnake in his living room. And so don't leave your doors open. And even though my door is up uh, three sections of cinder block steps, I don't leave it open. So that's important. But that be said, there's not a rattlesnake under every bush. I haven't seen a rattler here for... Oh, goodness, I think maybe a year and a half now. I've seen other species of snakes, but no rattles, not rattlers. Uh, let's see. Um, and then um, I'll finish this, this kind of uh, intro, or I should say cursory look at uh, start uh, things you need to know before you move to off grid by just saying, you know, YouTube is a wonderful, wonderful resource. So by all means, use it. No matter what you're going to do, uh, especially important things like plumbing and, you know, and, and laying down a, a foundation for your building, etc. Uh, watch as many YouTube videos as you can possibly do. You know, you're going to be at a point maybe even when you're, I know I am, weary of looking at YouTube videos uh, on any particular topic. But go back once you're tired out, give it a rest, go back the next day and learn more, try to learn more about it. I'm currently trying to learn about plumbing and hooking up hot, hot and cold water to a shower. And so, so far I'm just, wow, I, I feel like I'm in grade one uh, with plumbing. And so, uh, uh, but hopefully I'll get past um, some of the elementary parts of it and make uh, what I learned useful. So that be said, thank you, folks. I hope that was helpful. So I'm going to go to some questions here. And I might run a little long with this, folks. Um, I usually only do an hour. But this is such a in-depth topic. I want to make sure that everyone had a fair shake with it. There's 137 people here, which is really cool. And so I might run this one to an hour and a half. But by all means, I will not feel bad or insulted at any point. You go, you know what? I've got to go. <laughs> I've got to go. My aunt just came into the driveway and I got to go visit with her, etc. Uh, and uh, I will understand and, and off you go. No problem. So let's take a look 
at some of these cool questions. And I want to apologize right up front, folks, is so many of you joined me, 139 have joined me. So I may not get to say hi to everyone, but I'm going to be very aware who came here today, because even if I don't get to say hi to you today, uh, I should say right now, once this video posts or publish, I go back into these and, and look at all the comments, every one. So if you have a comment, um, I'm going to be looking at it. And so hopefully I'll get to them today. So let's have a look. I'm going to roll out my sleeves as they say, see who's here and look for some comments. Okay, here we go. All right, James Lucid says, get a hydrogen fuel cell generator. Well, James, I could, but what I, the setup I have seems to be working really well. I could look at it, though. And Michael Tachonik says, I don't use Patreon. They sell my info. That's not good. And uh, Deacon MMA says, YouTube takes 35 to 40% of every uh, donation. That's true. And so that's why I say to people, if you really, I mean, feel, don't feel obligated, but if you go, you know what, I haven't been to, I haven't gone out for dinner uh, this weekend, I'll throw Don 20 bucks or something, use PayPal, that's fine. But only again, if you want. And uh, Michael Anthony says, this is his first live stream. And so that's really cool. Wonderful to have you here. And he says, are there people living off grid in your area? You betcha, Michael. Let me think now. How many neighbors do I have within a mile that are living off grid? Oh, goodness. I'd say a dozen, 15. Yeah. So, yeah, there's no question. And uh, here we go. Let's see. Um, Ofer J says, hope everyone is having a great day, and I hope you are as well, Ofer J. Uh, and then Tim Erickson says, your reform Canuck, if you were a true Canadian, the axe would be stuck in the wall to keep the blade sharp. You know, Tim, that axe is, <laughs> the blade is now so dull, I have to re, have to resharpen it. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Shane says there's probably going to be a lot of shipping containers being sold cheap in Cochise County soon. Uh, then we got uh, <clears throat> already and moving along here. Mando says the average house in Arizona went up 90 to 100,000. Yes, uh, absolutely insane. My property, I checked with my real estate agent just a couple months ago, and this little humble property has now almost tripled in price since I bought it on December 31st, 2019. <clears throat> And Pat Noonan calls me the ketchup guy. Not sure why, but I definitely like ketchup. Or maybe because Pat saw a video where I've got it on my eggs. That might be it. And Deacon MMA says, can you live in an RV full time in Cochise County or just while you build your home? Just when you build, just while you're building your home. But Cochise County is pretty gracious. You can keep applying for extensions when your home is not built within the two years that's on paper. And no question, uh, Aislinn Fox says that uh, depending on what building requirements they are, uh, it, you're going to need to marry that up with whatever county you're choosing uh, to, uh, to relocate to. And Patty Lily Richardson says, are you connected to city water? It's so dry in Arizona. What do you do for water? Just curious. Patty, um, feel free to check out the videos. I mean, I'll give you the short answer, but I've got lots of videos on how I get water. And I get water two ways. My number one way is my 200 square foot tiny cabin has gutters 
And then that goes down the gutter, travels 45 feet and up into a 1200 gallon tank, which I have a garden hose hooked to. And so I can get water out of it whenever I want. When the tank gets really, really low, I haul in, I call in a water company and they drive out and they're called Kerfman Water. And Kerfman, uh, and Kerfman Water Supply uh, fills up my tank and then also my pond for about $225. Bill Burns says, have you thought about a gray water system? When I built my house in Jamaica, it was a must. Use the water from sink, showers, etc., to water the garden. Now, in Cochise County, Bill, I can't use kitchen sinks, but I can use a bathroom sink and also a shower for a gray water system. As a matter of fact, they mandate that to even get a permit to be uh, to live with the owner builder opt out. So I'll be doing that at some point. And uh, Limerick's Cube says, I'm a new subscriber from Arizona. Thank you so much for subscribing and being here. <clears throat> and Robert says, How is this? Robert uh, Shina says, How is the stone for building a stone house? Uh, I've built two sheds out of good old stone here in Connecticut. Um, Getting stone here might be a little bit of a problem, Robert, because most of this area is um, clay, sand, caliche is what it's called. So getting really good stone here would probably be difficult, I would think. Deacon MMA says, uh, love the little pond, and I do as well. It, it's an absolute winner. I'll fix my webcam here. If I can... Yeah, the little pond is amazing. Everything from uh, uh, hummingbirds drink out of that to mule deer to bobcats and every, everything else. Um, Peter, good old Peter from, uh, from Africa. Hi, Peter. Says, what are the rules about putting a porch onto your shed like a covered deck apart from the shed? Um, actually, what will happen is, is they count that as square footage. And so essentially they, what would happen would be my taxes would increase, but that's okay. Um, so uh, to have a permanent building, this is a temporary one, by the way, to dwell in, you need to have 296 square feet or bigger. So my, on paper, well, I call it the big house that I'm hoping to build soon is 1100 square feet. And that's going to have massive porches on it for rainwater harvesting. Um, so uh, Pat Newton says dehydration would be a concern in that area. Yes, indeed. Stay watered. Drink drink a lot. Um, I'm fortunate that I don't take as much water as the average person, but I still stay hydrated enough. I'm old enough to figure out what I need now. <clears throat> 300-pound leprechaun says, well, shares are a nightmare. Stay away from them if possible. I totally agree. Alrighty, what else we got going on here? Zen Zen here is here from Wales. Oh, good oh. Actually, Zen Zen, um, I think I'm something like 15% Welch, by the way, Ancestry DNA says. Simply Pam is here, one of my neighbors, and uh, a really cool, uh, really cool uh, person. Her husband and Brian and her uh, are building a really cool straw bale home. And uh, I visit them, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and it's always good to see them. And then Isaac Leeper says you can set up a tarp on a slope and catch rain that way. Yep, that's a good idea. And how are you filling and purifying your, your water? Yeah, two ways through a gar through a, a garden hose, uh, a garden hose filter, and then also through a Berkey water filter system. <clears throat> and Mandy says it's a uh, minus 21 Tuesday. Oh, oh, that sounds cold. I've done minus 20. I've done minus 40 and then some in Canada. And then uh, Joe uh, doing random says essentially the, in the dragoon areas, essentially watch out for monsoons. 
because you can get stranded, which is very, 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 very uh, true. Um, Pat Noon says, do you have to pay property tax and shed tax? Pat, that is a absolutely excellent question. I pray, I pay, try that again. I have four acres and I pay property tax, but it's really reasonable. So I'm like $244 a year. Ridiculous. I pay no tax on this building because it's a 200 square foot shed and sheds are not considered bona fide real buildings in, in the sense that, that they're taxable. Uh, Isaac Leeper says, do you plan to wild forage? And uh, that's a great idea. I think I'll look at some of my weeds that are nutritious next year, Isaac, and maybe uh, scrounge around and do uh, and do some uh, scrounging for uh, those that would be medicinal, medicinal, pardon me, and taste good as well. <clears throat> Terry says, Terry Thompson says, you're going to get a second water tank. Actually, I want to do three more, actually, Terry. I want to do two big ones like Pam has. If you want to ask simply Pam about her and Brian's tanks, you're welcome to do that. Um, they have two, if I have it correct, 2,500 gallon tanks. And I'm planning on doing two of those to uh, collect water from the big house roof, which will be about 1,100 square feet. <clears throat> Tim says, so Cochise County no longer allows compost systems. Uh, I'm afraid you're correct, Tim. Um, to my knowledge, you'll want to double check with them, but I'm pretty sure it's septic only now. <clears throat> Michael Anthony says, I meant on-grid neighbors. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, my neighbors are directly across from me are on-grid. They're the end of the power line, as a matter of fact, so they are on-grid. But everybody south of me that way for miles is off-grid. Um, Deacon MMA, Don, does your shed, tiny home, count by the county as a permanent home? No, it's literally a shed because it's not wired. I mean, I run power into the building, but it's not wired. There's no running water in it. You know, it's essentially a shed that's insulated. And, uh, and essentially, uh, I can make it a permanent residence in two ways, which I hope to in the future. Here are the two ways. Number one, once I put porches on it to make it not 200, but 296 is the magic number for the county square feet, then it becomes something that's legitimate, but it has to be permitted in two ways. It can be an opt-out, but I can't do that with this building because I already have my big house plans for my opt-out. But this could become an accessory living quarters. And I could do an opt out for that, too. But I have to wait for another five years. So this has to essentially stay as a shed where I just use it occasionally once my big home is done. Sorry, the camera had a wardrobe malfunction there. Here we go. So as I was saying, uh, essentially, the uh, um, the, sh the little shed here can be a, uh, a, a residential building I could live in uh, as an accessory living quarters once I have the big house in place that's all permitted. Or um, if I didn't do the big house, I hope this isn't confusing, and just said to the county, you know what, I'm going to rewrite the 1,100 square foot proposal I did for you. Let's just make it 300, and we'll call this cabin my opt-out building. And they would go along with that as well. But uh, as because they because I asked them if I could change up the size, so that should work. Um, okay. Apologies again for the uh, camera misfunction there, folks. All right. Lots of wonderful questions here. Suzanne Weitzel says, you're lucky. Maybe snakes, maybe your snakes came here. I had 15 rattlesnakes, six racers, two gopher snakes, and I don't know, and two Gila monsters. Wow, that's crazy, Suzanne. 
I actually love to see a Gila monster. Um, yeah, for whatever reason, I'm super fortunate. Rattlers seem to disappear, but I've noticed an increase in king snakes, and they're deadly on rattlers. So I don't know. Uh, Limburg's Cube says they have a straw bale house in McNeil on 35 acres. Wow, that's great. It's almost finished. Fantastic. Good stuff. And said I put a concrete floor in front and front door. Been here for 15 years. Never had a rattler in your living room once. That's great. Isaac says, uh, Leper says, a quality ho hockey sticks. Good for snakes. That's true. I've used a hockey stick. Every Canadian boy has used a hockey stick. John Elmore says, I used PayPal for the first time. Did it come through? Okay. Oh, my goodness, John. I, I wish we could. If you were here, I'd give you a good old brotherly bear hug. It sure did. That was really kind. I was like, whoa, this man sent me a big chunk of cash. Thank you so much. Uh, John says, why haven't you drywalled the walls? Are you smelling any off-gassing from insulation? John, that is an absolutely excellent question. Um, uh, once this stuff is dried, you don't get any more off-gassing than you would in a new car. You know that new car smell? That's off-gassing from all the chemicals. And eventually it goes away. And same, same here, this went away. I haven't walled it in because essentially um, I, I'm, I'm putting all of my energy into the big home and all of my, uh, and, and, and into my, uh, the, the 1100 square foot building soon. So I don't have the finances to put uh, into this. Plus, it, it, I can't get it permitted at this point uh, because all of to be completed because um, uh, unless I just essentially cover it up and don't even do any wiring because I want to do wiring at some point. Because again, I hope you follow this. As soon as I wire it and plumb it, then it becomes a, to the county's eyes, not a shed anymore. And then I would need extra permits. So I hope that makes sense. It's a little complex. Uh, Kevin Ward says, G'day, mate. Uh, uh, <coughs> G'day, Kevin. How you going, mate? Um, oh, I'm, oh, I'm wondering whether you're from... Uh, uh, Queensland uh, or uh, New South Wales or one of those places. And uh, when I talk Australian, you have to forgive me because it's kind of like some bloke in the middle of nowhere in, in, in Queensland. And even not that good, actually. Okay. Um, Joseph says, keep up the hard work. And my wife and I love your like, like your videos. Thank you so much. And then uh, Suzanne says, rodents storing food in cans uh like garbage cans keep rodents from getting into the stash yeah no question um it's one of those learning curves rodents are for sure yeah thanks pam for the uh give a thumbs up and a like i appreciate that that would be super thank you so much um john morgan says does arizona tax your social security uh Yes, uh, I have to pay federal and state on it, I believe, if I have it right. Maybe I better go back to TurboTax. <laughs> I think that's correct. I'd have to go back to my taxes. Okay. Let's how, see who else we got going on here. Ed says, I've watched all your videos. You're doing a nice job. Thank you so much, Ed. Oh, the camera's causing me grief, grief again. Uh, and Hugo De and Hugo says, uh, looks like I have the materials for an Adobe home. Yeah, I'm thinking you're right, actually. <laughs> but it's a lot of work, so I'm not going to be going that route for sure. Um, 
can you use incinerators toilets instead of septic diversity love asked that and you know from what i know the county says no and so that's annoying and frustrating for sure ron pastor says i'm off grid here in southeast oklahoma wow that's great ron i'm glad the videos are helpful and ed says how long do you plan to live in a temporary house and will they let you essentially um uh, I hope to be in the big home sometime next year, actually. And so uh, it, it, it's one of those things that uh, it's atypical to live in a shed, but um, I, for me, it's been the best choice. And then any time limit to build on your property, Asgard says, yes, uh, three years for me, as in I have to have some major progress done. So as of June coming up in 2023, I have to have some major progress done on the big house, as I call it. How about a video on how you make your videos? Well, I could do that, although I've kind of alluded to that on a, a recent video, actually. I show you the camera equipment and what I don't like about YouTube videos. Not the mama says, you have plans for raising any chickens, pigs, or animals for food sources? Fresh, fresh eggs are my favorite meal. You know, not the mama, I, I find livestock ties me down. So not really. Um, I think I'll just buy organic elsewhere. And then, no, I don't have to worry about um, dealing with, you know, taking care of livestock. Don, I believe hummingbirds migrate south in the winter and they did not die. Well, Isaac, Leaper, Isaac, nope. I had my little Anna's was out feeding this morning on uh, on his uh, frozen hummingbird feeder, but slurping away like a popsicle. He was enjoying it. And uh, Anna's over winter, they're really tough. And so some species like Anna's over winter, most go to Mexico. Time is going fast, guys. Um, and Hugo says, if you ever get another person with an excavator, can you have them trench out the pond and dig down to harder soils? Uh, yeah, I could do that. Um, it's kind of low priority, though. Uh, everything is going to be focus on the big house soon i hope ed says tell us about your camera equipment ed again um in the there's a video i have called um essentially how i make youtube videos or i should say all about youtube videos and how i make money from them and that shows my camera equipment but in a nutshell it's a panasonic lumex fz 300 with a 600 millimeter lens on it and a tax star shotgun mic mounted on top. Knockout drops us. Could you remind us what the zoning is in the county for a tiny home? Thanks. Sure. Uh, tiny homes are, are permitted. They have to be 296 square feet or bigger. And of course, they always have to be hooked up to a legitimate septic. How far do I have to go to dump my garbage? Um, I have to go uh, a 25-minute 20, uh, drive to Bisbee, and uh, it costs me $5, and I go there twice a month. Mandy says, I'm worried about my dogs getting bit by a rattler or a scorpion. Not so much scorpions, but yeah, honestly... I wouldn't keep a dog, and most of my neighbors don't have them uh, for that very reason. The neighbors over there, the woman that used to live there, um, her small dog got bitten twice. The second time it expired. The other, she moved away, and the neighbors that own the house that she had, they have two border collies. One's been nailed and has a major scarring area on the leg where he got nailed but survived. Um, so I, I wouldn't, you know, you can take your dog and train it to avoid rattlesnakes 
but I don't know how successful that is, to be honest. So I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't have a dog in this environment. Michelle Jones is here, says late to the party. Glad you're here, Michelle. And a Limerick Cube says, how long have you lived here? In Arizona, I have lived here two and a half years. Uh, Nanny Goat Acres says, Don, is your bed a bed in a box? Uh, oh, okay. No, it's really cool. It's a, it's this really cool metal framework that folds down and has feet and it's designed to be the box spring. And then I just put the mattress on top. And then I have a foamy on top of that to make it, because it's a very hard mattress, to make it really comfortable. My bed is really plush. I mean, we're talking hotel quality. I don't didn't spare, uh, didn't spare the funds as far as the bed's concerned. Uh, Mark Smith is watching from 29 Palms. Thanks for watching, Mark. Uh, Valinda says, how's my knee doing? Thank you, Valinda. Um, it's stubbornly coming along. I mean, we're talking it's so slow to heal. Um, I still walk with a limp and I put have a brace on it, but it's gradually getting better, but it's really, really slow to get better. But I guess that's what happens when your knee is almost 68 years old, but I'm very optimistic. Blair says, is there a Trader Joe's? Mm, no, I think Tucson is the, an hour and a half away is the nearest Trader Joe's. PMLM says, how's your shoulder logic tan holding up? Um, just, but I want to replace it soon with a, sh with a wooden shed. I'm hoping to do that uh, hopefully within a, a few months. Limerick says right now I have a pair of barn owls and three owlets nesting in the rafters of a straw bale. Really cool. That's so awesome. David Hamilton says I have five acres in northern Nevada on top of a mountain. Hope I can live in a travel trailer there. It, it'll just depend on your uh, on your county, David. Check with uh, check with the county in Nevada to find that out for sure. <laughs> Jennifer Bruce says hi hi Don hi Jen. I hope you're staying warm. Yeah, I'm actually too warm. I had to turn the uh, Big Buddy heater off because um, the sun comes in the windows and I have six inches of insulation here. So you can imagine how warm that would be. Uh, Edward says, nice looking flannel shirt. Is it chilly there? You know, I'm just cold blooded, you know, always, you know, Ooh, great. It's great that I'm here and uh, it's so great that I'm here in Southeast Arizona because, you know, a hundred degree day just doesn't phase me hardly at all. Unlike most people. Mike says, you talk about the big house, how many square feet? 1100 square feet, Mike. And uh, that's because it'll have two 40 foot long porches on both sides. The actual living space inside will only be about 640. As uh, Asgard 111 says, what's your thoughts with properties with no HOA in Southeast Arizona? Uh, just depends on the property, really. You'd want to check it out for sure. Uh, I wouldn't buy property sight unseen, by the way, never, because it can be landlocked and you might have to use some neighbor who's grumpy, use their property, even get to your property. So I would never buy property without visiting it first and, and examining it very, very carefully. Uh, desert Oasis RV Park and Campground. Hello from the Desert Oasis uh, Campground in McNeil. Hi there, folks. I bet any money I've driven past your place. Is there anything you do to keep the snakes away? In Georgia, I used to put sulfur around my yard. Huh, interesting. 
I don't know of anything, Robinson family, to be honest. I just watch out for them. And it's only rattlesnakes I worry about. I enjoy the gopher snakes and, you know, the coach whips and everything else. Diversity says it would be easier to build a raised platform and closed area for the dog. Yeah, that's a lot of work, honestly, but just depends, I guess. Ed says, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, Ed. <clears throat> What kind of materials you're planning to use for your big house? Great question. Lee's living out of the norm. Um, it's going to be made the very same as this, two by six. And then the outside is going to be hardy board, which is this amazing stuff that I absolutely love. It's, it kind of looks like plywood with some cement in it, and it lasts and lasts. It's not cheap, but it's great stuff. <clears throat> Uh, JPFT says, do you ever go to Bisbee for the music? What about Naco? Do you ever cross to shop? Um, JP, I, I go to Bisbee to shop and stuff, but I've got off-grid friends I visit. So culturally, I don't really go there just to listen to music, but I could. Don't go to Naco yet, although I need some dentistry, dentistry work done, and I might go there for that. <laughs> Um, Solek says between your living conditions from years ago <clears throat> in comparison to now, are you more or less content? Um, <clears throat> two years ago. Well, uh, definitely more content than when I lived in a tent. <clears throat> That's for sure. <laughs> And uh, no, I've gotten to really love this little cabin and, and it's very comfortable and uh, I really love it. The only thing about it that annoys me is when you have folks over, there's no room for anybody. So we're just practically standing on each other's toes uh, having a meal. So that's why I'm so looking forward to getting the big building done just so I can uh, have more friends. Richard Harrison says, will you build the big house from scratch or have a prefabricated delivered? Um, at this point, believe it or not, Richard, as long as if my fitness comes around again and uh, I become sturdy and ready to roll up my sleeves, I will build it myself with uh, help from, from others, input like uh, some of my subscribers are engineers, one of my subscribers in particular. And, um, of course, I'll need more than one hand for um, doing a variety of things. Bit of a dry throat. I'm going to get a cough drop. <clears throat> Have them right here. A little sip of water, too. Jen says, I'm glad your knee is getting better. Yeah, it is, Jen. It's just slow, but it's coming along. Ed says, what does it cost to build a regular prefabric, a regular build home out there? Oh, wow. Goodness. Um, I don't know, but it's going to be, it's going to be pricey. I doubt if you can build anything decently for less than 150000 I wouldn't think. A far cry from me, my big house, the budget for that is insulated and everything for about 17 grand, 17,000. <clears throat> Quite a difference. <clears throat> Abid Ali says, I joined late. Hi, Abid. Great to see you as always. Bill is from Benson, Arizona, says hi. Hi, Bill. And then Jay is from Murphy's. Hey, Jay. And diversity loves says, I'm disappointed. Housing is a human right. If it's, it's, it, it's profitable to house the housing homeless. If we redesign our cities, everyone but the U.S. is building energy tower condos, etc. cetera. Yeah, it, it, it's sad that so many seniors especially can't even afford to hardly survive. And homelessness is a big problem in this country. 
James says, wishing you a Merry Christmas and a wonderful, productive New Year. Same to you, James. <clears throat> James Kibbe, thank you so much. Fred says, if you could if you could start all over again, what would you do or would you do anything different? Uh, yeah, I would. I would. I would research very carefully the owner builder opt out and be aware of the permitting process in a much more thorough manner. And so that might have changed up how much time and energy I put into just getting this little cabin set up with rainwater harvesting, et cetera. And I would have put that energy into the big house because I thought owner builder opt out meant that your whole property, the all four acres, any building on it was covered by that. And you could go ahead and do that. But instead, it's per building. So you can only develop one building at a time with owner builder opt out. And you have to wait five years once one building is complete before you can do another one. So that was a tough lesson to learn. Hi there, Olive, by the way, Olive Levette. James says, Weiser, can you have livestock where you're at? Uh, limited amount, yeah. I can't have a lot of stuff, like a lot of chickens and all kinds of things. It's it's kind of rural residential, so meaning there are some rules. Suzanne says, isn't Hardy Board heavy? It is, but in a good way. Once it's uh, put up, it's built to last. And, and Michelle wanted to know if I'm going to build the my main house from scratch. That's the plan, Michelle. And Mandy says, am I correct that you can no, uh, no longer have just a gray water septic? You have to have a black water septic. Um, <clears throat> Mandy, uh, it's mandatory now in the county, from what I know, to have a regular septic system. Uh, so, and a septic tank and the whole business. So, uh, so that's always been the case where gray water has always been with the county, um, just water from the showers, that kind of thing. Uh, water from your sink, as I mentioned, is black water. And of course your toilet naturally. And all of that has to run into a septic tank. Jen says construction workers are charging a fortune now. Well, <clears throat> last time I checked, uh, I work pretty cheap. So I'm good. <laughs> I won't be hiring any construction people anytime soon. <clears throat> Phantom Mc10 says, hi from Tucson. Hi there. Richard says, wish I was there to help you, but I'll be there in spirit. Well, Richard, you can always, you know, uh, contribute. I always tell folks when you do nothing but watch my videos, that is an amazing help. It really is. And I'll give you a tip. The other thing you can do is when you watch the videos, watch the advertisements, as in you don't have to actually physically watch them. Just let them run. Go get a coffee, hot chocolate, you know, go let the, go let the dog out, you know, chat with somebody. Then go back to the video. Because my understanding is, is YouTube monitors if you watch these videos. So I just tell people, don't, you don't have to watch them, but just let them play. So that will help a lot. Bill uh, Nepress says, Don, if you need a helping hand or some, or some hauling, I have a three-quarter ton pickup. Let me know so I can put it on my schedule. Uh, one old guy to another. Thank you, Bill. That's really kind. 
And James, uh, James Wiser says, okay, so pretty much hobby farming. That's correct. Although there's a major rancher here that uh, lets his cattle run not too far from my building, although they're far enough away, I can only hear them mooing in the distance. But his family has been grandfathered in a long, long, long time. So he gets to do that. F. Uber says, I've heard lumber's coming down. Yeah, definitely. So I've got to get going on my building. So, uh, so this knee needs to get better and I need to get other projects out of the way. Lee said, we'd love to come out and help you build your big house when the time comes. That's really kind. Thank you. Robinson family says, I'm in Tucson too. Cool. And then Hugo says, a good thing about Arizona is you're, is you're allowed to catch water here in Nevada. It's illegal. That is so, so weird, uh, uh, Hugo. Ridiculous. As a matter of fact, in Arizona, you're encouraged to catch rainwater. Absolutely encouraged. Um, I can't understand why you wouldn't be encouraged to capture rainwater. Ridiculous. And Michelle says, yep, the more we learn to do on our own, the more we save on labor. Absolutely, no question. Ed says, what about a prefab home? Ed, that is just a great question, sir. I looked at prefab homes. I looked at every kind of home you could imagine before moving here and deciding. Um, I looked at uh, um, box cars. I looked at... Uh, uh, straw bale, I looked at no end of things, and including um, a prefab home. Prefab homes, to get even a small one, is about forty to $50,000. And I came here, I didn't come here with that kind of money. I really didn't. And so I just... Uh, I just brushed it off as, no, that can't happen. So, I mean, that would have been nice. But but in all honesty, I love the pioneer style of going at developing this property the way uh, that the county allows me to do. And so um, <clears throat> that means that I get to learn a lot, and it's a lot of hard work, but a lot of fun. Man who says a septic tank install around five to six grand there. Mine was five grand going on two years ago. You're going to, you have to shop around, but you're probably going to pay more like around eight, I believe. But again, you'll have to shop around to get an exact price. That's an educated or not so educated guess on my part. Ed says, will they allow tiny homes there? Yes, they will as your main residence. But they've got to be 296 square feet or larger. Um, I frankly think, why not just go to a 300 square foot one? So, yes, they will. But, again, your big cost is going to be having your septic there because you're going to have to go to a full-size septic to tie your tiny house too. Uh, Fred says, I heard your comment about dogs and snakes. What about cats and snakes? Cats are amazing. Um, those things, their reflexes are phenomenal. So I would never have a cat, and it's a big topic. I mean, I grew up with cats. I mean, from age 9 to 15, that's one of the ways I kept warm in, my, uh, in our blue-collar, low-income Canadian home. Um, <clears throat> I had a very long-haired, fluffy, black and white cat named Tom. Not very original. But um, so I'm not one of these people that just, you know, you know, would try to harm a cat. You know, that's for sure. But as a bird guy and, and, and a ex-wildlife researcher, I'm very, very much aware. And I'm a realist, you know, very, very much aware when I have my biologist hat on how much prey they take, even when they're really well fed. And sadly enough, you look at statistics, 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 say that again, with Fish and Wildlife Service and other, and other organizations, they're way up there as one of the main uh, reasons songbirds are decreasing because there's so many of us and we have our pets. 
So indoor cats, or what I would do if I went the cat route, because they're a lot more trainable than you think. I'd take my new little kitty and I would I would harness train him. And so he'd be out with me in, in the yard for an hour or two a day, that kind of thing. Uh, and he'd always be monitored. And that way everything is safe because this is going to be a little vulnerable, vulnerable, vulnerable here, folks, and controversial. So don't shoot me. I'm just trying to be real. I remember visiting a friend's home who had a cat, a big black and white cat, and this beautiful little robin, a little fledgling robin, couldn't fly well, you know, just as cute as, as could be, and it's nailed by this cat, and it's flapping and screaming. I'm just screaming, and you can imagine the pain it's going through, and, you know, and the cat was is not even going to eat it afterwards. So when that really, really hits home, you will never have an outdoor cat. So that's controversial. I wouldn't get a lot of fans for that opinion in some cases. But remember, I don't dislike cats. If I had one, it would be least trained and I'd monitor it all the time. Uh, okay. So <clears throat> what about doing my own labor is... Is that they can tax it? Gosh, Mandy, I don't think so. I think if you do your own labor, nobody, it's nobody's business, from what I understand. And David gives an update to Nevada and uh, the business of uh, rainwater. It's from, you can do it for the residents only. And the law was changed in 2017. Go Nevada. <clears throat> wow, 142 people here. How cool. <clears throat> Make sure you hit the old thumbs up button. Thank you, folks. <clears throat> and then um, <clears throat> Diversity Love says, Don, I think you're amazing. Forgive my incessant dream on Agora, a t Agora A Tower. I keep trying to save the world, but the world must take that, that on, not one man named Don. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Honestly, I'm a realist, uh, diversity love. My goal has never changed. Um, it's all about affordable living as a senior. Uh, and I'm so, so, so thankful. Uh, there's no power bills here. There's no water bills. I don't have any bills per month other than, you know, a, uh, you know, Medicare Part B um, or Part C, whatever is the, you know, the supplement. And, you know, car insurance and, and gas and food. But other than that, it's really it. And YouTube, as I said, is 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 a modest income, but it's growing all the time. And it's it it. I had no idea I could make money from YouTube, so it's really really super. Uh, Peter says, "Do you drink any alcohol at all?" Yes, Peter, I do. Not very often though. Um, I'm guessing. To make a guess, mm, 12 glasses of wine and two beer a year, probably it. Peter says, uh, Oh, sorry, 300 pound leprechaun says, uh, Have a fantastic Christmas and New Year. Thank you so much, leprechaun. You as well. So, we've got another about 10 more minutes, folks, to ask your questions. <clears throat> And Isaac Leeper has some giant reed for me if I'd like it. That's interesting. Cool. <clears throat> PMLM says cats and birds. Uh oh, no, we, we transitioned from that topic because <laughs> I know that one is a really, really hot potato. Um, Mandy, respectfully, uh, cats are smart enough that they can avoid the bell by stepping just the right way. A really good thing are, are um, birds be safe collars. It's like a big, colorful Elizabethan collar. And birds, when even a cat is sitting in the shrubs, can spot it really quickly. I love them. It's about, oh, 18 bucks for those on Amazon. They're wonderful. Um, LR says, are you going to finish the walls? Yeah, I addressed that one. Yeah, at some point, uh, at some point, LR, um, but that's uh, further down the road because, again, this is just, as far as the county is concerned, this is just a shed. 
And so I'll put all my energy and finishing up the walls with, with drywall and hopefully do a decent job with my, what I call the big house, the building that is registered with the county that I've yet to build. And that's going to be 1,100 square feet. <clears throat> and Michael Anthony says, seen any UFOs? Um, I don't drink that much, but thanks. Um, Dan Danny says, have you made it to Vegas yet? Yes, but a long, long time ago, 1986. Uh, JP says, how much are you spending on propane? About $18 a month is what I spend. Wow, diversity love. That sounds really cool. Like a dog park for cats. Nice. Peter says, if you need an animal that will keep snakes, etc., away without bothering your birds, get a Jack Russell. Oh, wow, Peter. I have, there's two issues for me. I find dogs in particular, especially little dogs, control your life, kind of like a demanding two-year-old where you have no choice. If it's five in the morning and they want up, you're going to get up, etc. And I like the freedom of not having any animals here at all, to be quite honest. Uh, and also, I'm kind of a bit of a softy, so so any animal, even a bird that's a pet of mine, if if it when it passes away, I feel really weird and and sad for a long time. Donkeys, uh, Isaac Leeper says, are are hell on snakes, coyotes, strange people, etc. Yeah, donkeys are no are no uh, uh, are, uh, are mean business and are no slouch when it comes to those things, for sure. Richard says, have you ever been married? Very close. Didn't happen. Uh, I'll leave it at that. And I'll just say, if she was an amazing friend and super compatible, I'd consider it even at this stage. That's all I'll tell you. Rob says, have you been to the local bird sanctuary south of McNeil? Whitewater Draw is what I'm thinking you mean, Rob. Yeah, I have. And it's absolutely amazing. This time of year, thousands of sandhill cranes around. Absolutely fantastic. JPFT says, Don, how far is your supermarket? I go to Safeway and Bisbee, so it takes me about 25 minutes to get there. <clears throat> Peter says, have a, Peter Stoffberg says, have a, a great Christmas and a big new year. You too, Peter. I absolutely love your comments. And, and I'll be honest, folks, um, the folks who come by and watch my videos and leave comments, I get to know them a bit, you know, just even just a little bit back and forth where they live and, you know, some of their likes and dislikes. And so it's just not a name on my screen. A lot of folks... I actually uh, know a bit. And so that part of YouTube is really, really cool. And I've gotten to know some really super folks from YouTube who are now my personal friends who are also other off-gridders. Uh, Banty Hinkle says, new here. Hello from New Jersey. Hi, Banty. Hope you're good. Rob says, I'm a bird photographer. Wow, fantastic, Rob. Wow, there is nothing more cool and chill and chilled out than bird photography. You can be grumpy and have, not having a great day. Step beside the camera. Step behind the camera, pardon me. Get outside. In an hour's time, you're going to be in a place in your mind where you're just chilled and relaxed. And a lot of the world has is out of sight, out of mind. Really cool. Denny Sparrow says, love all the, the butterflies and hummingbirds. Stay healthy, wealthy, and wise. Thank you, Denny. Uh, Lorreen says, hello from North North Phoenix. And hello, Lorreen. And so, so glad you're, uh, glad you're here and you enjoyed the toilet paper skit. <laughs> Juggling the canned beans. Yeah, well, if I'm Put a helmet on, maybe I could juggle the canned beans. 
<laughs> Abed Alley says Safeway Grocery. Bisbee, I visited last time. So, Abed, I think you're coming in January, correct? Diversity Love says, Dawn, do you have an Amazon wish list? I sure do, Diversity Love. It's been an amazing source of gifts, and I'm so thankful for everyone who uh, I feel like a cherished grandpa, to be honest. I get these gifts from Amazon. So the link to it's in um, all of my videos. Just take a look in the description of the videos, and you'll see it. <clears throat> Peter, uh, you're gonna make you're gonna have me all choked up, mate. I could not imagine a greater honor to be a personal friend. Thank you, Peter. Um, that's just that's just really, really kind. Thank you. <laughs> would you ever consider setting up your live stream at your pond? Isaac says, I could, but the wind would play havoc with it. Honestly, it's just almost always windy here. Oh, the, the spam bots are coming in here. Red Hot Fiat says, Merry Christmas, got to go. Thanks for being here, man. Well, Abed, I hope you're. Uh, I hope that that when you come in January, it's a very profitable time, sir, and that uh, you get a lot of your questions answered. And I hope that will be uh, really, really profitable for you. Well, folks, uh, I'm going to head out in three minutes. I still, see, I see there's still 162 people here, and so that's, uh, sorry, 141 people here, and that's really amazing. So I want to say thanks everyone for joining me today. Um, if you've got any last minute questions for me, you're welcome to uh, pop them in the, the chat there and I'll do my best to answer them in about three minutes. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Bill Brazil. Thank you so much for coming by. Wandering Noam, Alaska, will you also be documenting the build of your big house? You bet. I'm going to try to make it as detailed as I can so that I can bring everyone along and uh, and so you can see how I do with it and watch some of the interesting, interesting ways I have of doing things. Jason Wilson says, how's the Titan generator doing? Holding up. Fantastic. The Titan, I'll tell you, I cannot. I don't think I can find a negative review on that system anywhere online. It is a winner. Powerful, gives me all the gives me the wattage I need. Absolutely fantastic. I would buy another one just like that. Uh, Danny says, uh, Danny, Danny Sparrow says, how do you plan to celebrate the new year? I haven't figured out yet, Danny. Maybe with some friends. We'll see. Rob C., have a blessed Christmas to you as well. And to everyone who I've not addressed personally, I hope you'll forgive me. It's just that there's just been so much action here. Um, even though I can talk pretty fast, I couldn't, I couldn't possibly address everything. Um, Kevin Rums, Rummelhard says, would love to see a video where you itemize all your costs to date from land purchase, sewer, and billing. Kevin, that will come. And the reason I'm holding off on it, because I want to finish up my big building and get ensconced in that and have it all modernized so that I can then do an accurate readout for people. Thanks, Isaac, for uh, the offer of the forage information. Uh, and you have a great day as well. Matthew just got on. Wow, Matthew, you made it under the wire. But unfortunately, this one is about to end. Isaac says, what internet are you using? You haven't dropped once. I have an amazing internet. Isaac, um, go on to my YouTube videos, and it's titled, I think, Off-Grid Senior Does Super Fast Internet. 
and that'll explain everything about it. I absolutely love it. It's amazing. And you gotta love the price. It's 20 with tax, $24 a month. Matthew, I totally understand confusion about East and West time. That's totally understandable. Well, I hope you, you'll come by for another live chat. And uh, folks, if you ever want to contact me uh, with additional questions, you're welcome to email me, affordabledesertliving at gmail.com, and I answer every email I receive. So for now, thank you very, very much for coming by and, and, and saying hi, and I hope this was helpful and answered some questions you might have had. Forgive me again if I didn't get to everybody, and also, um, by all means, everyone have a, a great Christmas, and I hope 2023 is going to be super exciting for you. As those of you who are going to be moving off grid, uh, I'm just wishing you well and cheering you on. And I hope that turns out to be the best decision of your life. Thank you so much. See you on the next live chat, guys.